Who has a lovely piano music in the background? Maybe it's me. <laughs> Not me. Cool. Well, my kids are practicing piano. <laughs> cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, they don't like school listen. today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, how many people should we wait for? I'll wait until two more minutes. like I should pull out my bass and jam with whoever's practicing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Go yeah. for it. We have a few more minutes. <laughs> Just waiting for more people to come in. Yeah. We need at least one Is that Jingle Bells they're playing? Sounds like it. <laughs> Maybe. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, Barry, now I'm sad. I thought you were really going to play for us. You can hear it. But... Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know. I don't know. Jingle. We bell. hear you. <laughs> <laughs> <Improv> time. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, I see you've got a hi hat in the background there. So come on. <laughs> 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 oh man, my, my drum set is just buried in the closet. I, I gotta set it up again. <laughs> oh, Omar's got something. All right. Yeah. It's the C yeah. Python band. <laughs> oh, there you go. Awesome. Is that a telly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. I've got a cowbell downstairs, but I won't get it. <laughs> <laughs> what we need, man, we need more cowbell. <laughs> yes. Only if he's got a fever for it. <laughs> I'm out of your muted so we couldn't hear you if you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a name here. All right, you're not playing or? <laughs> okay. All right. Um... I, don't have, I don't have an amp here, so like an electric bass without an amp is kind of just sad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just a stream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Buzzing. All right, I think mm -hmm. let's start it. Let's get started. I have re the, the recording has started from a few minutes ago. I have screens to share. <laughs> All right, welcome. Uh, Today is the last day of our sprint. I know maybe it's the end of the day for some people. Um, for myself, I still have like half a day here. So, great job. Um, just a quick agenda. I will start with a, doing a group photo. Emily has agreed to take another group photo for us. 
I will share some stats of our sprint this week. And then I will give each one of you, well, each project uh, to, to share with us your accomplishments, things you got done this week. And then we'll show some appreciation to folks who have helped it make this sprint happen. And then in the end, I have a feedback form that I will be sharing later. So yeah, let's take a group photo. Let me stop sharing and get ready while we have most people joining. Um, yeah, Emily, let us know what, <laughs> how, how this works. <laughs> yeah, so anyone who wants to be on video in the photo, please jump on video. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna try to take two pictures this time. Um, I'm gonna try to get one with people's names and one without. Um, so it might take me a second, but yeah, I can get everyone all at once, so. All right, one, two, three. All right, got him. Good, well, thank you. Okay, let me get back to sharing. Um, okay, some statistics. Uh, we have 47 sprinters registered on Discord. Uh, most of them are core developers. Uh, three of them are bug triagers. Um, because of the format of this virtual, this time we are actually able to invite non-core developers. So that's great. And we have three mentees uh, joining us. So thank you, Luis and Eric Snow, who, are, who is being mentored by Eric Snow, Philippe Lines by Jason R. Coombs, and Hai Shi, who is mentored by Victor Steno. Thank you for joining us. Um, this week, we also promoted two new triagers, uh, Irit and Andre. And during this sprint, we all work on 24 different projects and teams. It might be off by one. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Statistics on GitHub pull requests. On the CPython repository, we reviewed and made decisions on 194 pull requests. 165 of the merge. On the dev guide, 25 close PRs in the last week, 21 of the merge. In the PAPS, 21 close PRs, and we merged 20 of them. Miss Islington, mostly just one PR that was merged. Uh, the rest were closed, and those are like depend about, um, depend about updates. Same as for the VR and the Knights who say me, um, these were just depend upon updates basically. In the photos repo, we have two new pull requests that were closed and two of, both of them are merged. So thank you so much for all of you working, making and reviewing pull requests. The Ask a Core Developer Anything session, we had uh, 2,100 unique live viewers. It peaked at 385 concurrent viewers. Uh, this morning I checked, there were 3,339 views so far, 226 likes and three dislikes, so about 98.7 like, like ratio. 37 countries tuned in to watch it live. Uh, the traffic source mostly came from Twitter and Discord. There were 662 direct links and internal YouTube search was 1,154 from YouTube and channel subscribers. After the, the session, we all, I know some of you went to the stream after party channel and there were like 857 messages posted there. So it's great. Thank you all for joining and participating in this session. On this card, uh, this was captured yesterday. We posted 5,822 messages on this card. Most popular channels are the general channel, garbage collection, organizers, which are actually private to us organizers, DSLs, and the standard lib. And most active posters are Guido Van Rossum with more than 500 messages. Steve Tower comes next with 515 messages and Pablo uh, with 451 messages. 
and the, the like the fourth people didn't even come close like they were like 200 messages <laughs> so, yeah uh, this is just the bar chart of like number of posts per channel to give a better idea and these are the number of posts per uh, by the hour um, to give to show a trend of which when are the people when our people are most active. Um, we also played the game of escape room. We, we escaped, two, two teams were formed. The team Flying Circus had four players and they escaped uh, in 58 minutes and used one clue. Team Wensleydale had five players and we escaped in 50 minutes and we also used one clue. Okay, now it's my turn to listen to all of your um, accomplishments. I'm going to stop sharing and I will read out these projects one by one. And um, for each of you, please just share two, three sentences, like brief, because we have like 24 projects mm -hmm. to hear from. So, okay, let's start with the documentation. Sure, thanks. Um, thanks for everybody who participated with the documentation stuff. We have a work group charter that's ready to go to the steering council, and we have some plans that are in the doc for how to build a documentation community on discourse and beyond. And so um, I'm very excited about everything that we did. Great. Uh, the standard lip project is next. Can't see whether people are muted or there's nobody. <laughs> I think that one might be a little of a tricky one just because it was used kind of as more of a a general chat for us a like sort of aggregate of multi uh, Okay. Uh, we so, can go next to the Async IO project. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can summarize that. So effectively, when we started off, uh, we were initially going into it with the expectation to work on the streams API, but after a lot of deliberation between um, Guido, myself, Lucas, and Irit, uh, we ended up deciding to prioritize uh, an upcoming exception groups. Uh, Pep, as you know, since that was a higher priority and more critical to async IO users. Um, we basically built off of uh, uh, last year's sprints and just started to further expand upon it. And our uh, new triage or ear that was uh, really, you know, fundamental to that discussion, you know, very useful and interesting ideas. <laughs> Cool. Uh, important project. Right. So, uh, Import Lib, uh, Philippe took took on the namespace packages support, which is a longstanding uh, weakness compared to package resources. So, we're happy to see that that's landed in the back port. Um, should be released soon, and and then we'll port that into C Python. Also, we worked through the tricky details of the 3.10 blocker that was previously a 3.9 blocker uh, around um, unreleased zip file handles. And uh, Steve, and so that's really uh, increased our uh, development velocity. Sorry, you mean you moved from where to where? GitLab and to GitHub. It sounded like you said the GitLab uh, CI runners were faster. I think you meant the, the GitHub CI runners, right? Were faster. That's correct. I, if I, yeah, GitHub was faster. Okay, makes more sense. Okay, the pigeon is next. Pigeon, how do I pronounce it? Uh, Pablo, can you summarize? Sure. Um, so we had some discussions on some of the small steps we're going to do forward. So 
we are going to publish a um, version on PyPI with the Python parser, so um, other third-party packages, um, the parser generator, so third-party packages can leverage that if they want to. We merge a PR from Lissandros that makes the parser uh, slightly faster. Uh, it has two runs. Uh, the first one ignores um, uh, errors, uh, so it says just to make it a bit faster. And we were kind of discussing also how to pour F strings to the parser. Sounds great. The AST project. So for the AST side, we was able to discuss and resolve a behavior related with conversion of operators and also draft the AST validator for the pattern matching. Thank you. Testing. Paul Ansel here. Who's working on it? I think Paul... it was mostly Paul. I don't think he's here. Oh, okay. I can say what he did. Sure. He was actually with me. So he's trying to do some uh, hypothesis testing on the standard library. And his idea is that if hypothesis is not present, uh, just the tests are skipped. But hopefully, uh, the CI can download hypothesis with some billboards. So if that is present, then he runs the hypothesis test. And I think he started with the zone info module. So he has some tests already. There is either a PR or it's already merged. I'm not sure. But yeah, that was what he was working on. Cool. Uh, what about from the CAPI or sub interpreters? Yeah, we, we uh, had some progress. There's um, Peter was able to get a PR up for some of the stuff that was missing from uh, PEP 573. And then he's also worked on uh, gathering the ideas for um, improving the stable ABI, got a project up for that. And also uh, he's working on, in general, just the isolating extension modules. There's a PEP 630, which I recommend everybody take a look at which is where he offers his overview of, of goals for isolating extension modules. And so it's, it should be pretty informative, helpful for extension authors and, and core developers alike. Uh, also working on uh, the sub-interpreter stuff, making the, the um, per-interpreter gill. Uh, we're moving towards isolating the runtime state where we need to per-interpreter. And so as part of that, I've been working on a tool to analyze the C source and, and uh, identify all the globals so that we can um, track those down and, and take care of them, as well as automate the process of making sure that we don't add any new ones. Um, we also had some good help from Lewis, who uh, was willing to dive in and, and work on some of the runtime finalization code, which is not for the faint of heart. Um, also, Haishi was working on uh, PyType get slot, which is super helpful. And uh, we also had some good discussions with the folks working on the GC. Um, especially, we're talking about just problems with the CAPI and, and how we can move past that. And, you know, it's the same stuff we've talked about before, but it's certainly not going away. So. Good discussions there. I, I wanted to call out a proposal Steve Dower put up uh, a while ago that I hope he keeps pursuing this idea of rings and layers. You can read about that more in the, on the notes that we kept for this group. And then, uh, you know, there's a lot to look forward to with these projects and all the, the goals that we're reaching for are achievable in the near term and there are plenty of good people focused on making them happen. So just want to thank everybody for working hard on this. Great. Uh, okay, next is garbage collection. Neil? Yeah, is my mic working? Yeah. Sorry, I just yeah. Got, got here late. Um, so I think the biggest news is that uh, Yona's uh, suggested that um, some PhD research can be done on on perhaps C Python to um, see what can be done for different garbage collection stuff. So that's great news. Um, we had a productive 
meet up and uh, I think we had some general consensus about how we might make a way forward. So um, the idea right now is try to prototype some kind of tracing garbage collector and um, the constraints are that we need to maintain a compatible C API. So existing C extensions need to compile. They might need minor source code changes, but not changes like you would need to make if you were gonna use something like the handle HPY. Um, also, the, the extension should be relatively similar performance as they are now. There might be some performance hit, whereas we would have a different API they could use, maybe based on HPY that would get rid of that and bring them back basically to where they are now or maybe faster. Um, uh, we had a fair amount of discussion about sort of different ways of how we could provide the backwards compatibility API, um, what, what the changes might look for Python internals. So uh, that part is a bit scary maybe that potentially a lot of code internal to C Python might have to change. We're using inkref and decref. Um, we had discussions about can we use the inkref to tell the tracing garbage collector about the object rather than just changing all that code. So yeah, quite a bit of good discussion. I, I didn't manage to get too much coding done this week, but uh, maybe another time. <laughs> Hopefully that covers everything. I, I, I wrote a pretty, pretty long summary on the Google Doc, so if somebody wants to go there, there's a fair amount of detail there. That's great. Thank you, Neil. Um, okay, the next is the triage and PR review channel. Any updates to share other than the stats at the end? <laughs> no? Okay, pattern matching is next. Yeah, so uh, this week we were able to uh, finish up our drafts of PEPs 634, 635, and 636, and we've sent those over to the steering council for a decision, which is really exciting. Um, we were also able to finish up some outstanding to-dos with the uh, reference implementation. Um, there's quite a bit of refactoring there as well. I've actually created a PR for the reference implementation, a draft PR on GitHub. So it's pretty big. If anyone's uh, interested in reviewing a few thousand lines of C code, uh, I'd like lots of eyeballs on it. So uh, that would be very, very helpful. Oh, exciting. <laughs> uh, the core mentorship team. Um, does, do, do you have separate ones for new contributors? Uh, no, I, it was in the same channel. So. <laughs> yeah, all right. So I'll say a few words about both. We yeah. had a few good discussions. And I mean, we mostly, ju mostly just discussed things and uh, came to some decisions of things to do. Uh, for new participants, uh, we want to add automated welcome messages and maybe congratulations for first PR merged. Uh, we want to try to reinstate uh, um, uh, like a two for one offer or something like that uh, for new contributors. If they have a PR or issue they want some core dev eyes on, they can uh, post somewhere, oh, well, I've done uh, ABC, uh, please review my PR, something official. So they know they can go there. They know what to, they need to do to get their thing reviewed. Uh, it's something Martin Lewis was doing uh, eight years ago, so we'll try that. Um, automated reminders for stalled PRs or stuck PRs, just instead of people after half a year seeing it stuck and then pinging the core dev. And we'd also like to try to uh, organize and revive the office hours that uh, Moriata and Zach were uh, doing for a while, just with some more people and like organize centrally so it's easier to find who's available and when as a channel for new contributors to be able to ask all sorts of questions they're uncomfortable asking more publicly. So that's for new participants. Uh, we also had a great discussion about mentorship um, and uh, sort of the action items from there are I think first and foremost to just encourage all of us all core devs to uh, consider mentoring more uh, just because the long-term effects of that are, uh, I mean, the returns on that are very, very big. And it looks like there's potential to be doing more, for more mentorship to be done. Um, 
we'll put up a page with some mentoring tips and uh, things like um, tips, uh, suggestions how to choose good candidates for mentorship and maybe how to, you know, what to focus on when doing mentorship. Um, another page, maybe more uh, outward facing of uh, how to become, what it means to be a core dev, what that sort of uh, demands and what mentorship towards that would look like. Uh, just to set expectations um, and then uh, another thought would be to have the triage team our work group or uh, to just occasionally if they recognize someone who seems like a good candidate to maybe offer them uh, mentorship towards core development uh, so maybe ask them to do that great yeah thank you for sharing uh, the next is, as I understand, it's Larry's project. I, I don't want to mention this out loud. There's certainly a misanthropic channel. Uh, I don't think Larry's here, so oh. I, I can say that we, okay. we failed to be sufficiently surly and we weren't misanthropic at all. So in a sense, it's a bit of a failure, really. La Larry was very happy about finally closing down the 3.5 branch. Yes, okay. All right, that's good. Uh, the next is Pep594. Chris, uh, Christian, right? If not Christian, then Brett? Christian, sure. Brett would be you, I would say. I can take it. Um, okay. Yeah, so basically, we just had a meeting to discuss more or less what we wanted to do with. Ah, the, sorry, the microphone wasn't working. <laughs> oh, there it is. Online. Hey. Yeah. Uh, so we had two discussions. Uh, one discussion between Carl and me, so he thinks me, and a longer discussion yesterday night. So we basically going to revive the PEP, uh, remove some of the mo models from the PEP. So Barry wanted to keep the email model. And we're also trying to make it a bit used to and remove models. So we are basically going to drop the files with a bit of infrastructure into a Git repository and then mark the uh, repository as archive so nobody can trade pull requests for issues against them. We're not planning to release the stuff on PyPI. So uh, we're thinking about um, figuring out if some people want to adopt the model and maintain that, but we haven't had a clear path for that yet. Oh, thank you. Uh, the next is voters. That, um, that one actually is me. Uh, so I did a couple things. Um, and this is all covered in the email I sent to Python committers. So this is hopefully boring news for everyone. Um, I added uh, a recording of when people left the team. Uh, and this is now up on the developer log. Uh, that was kind of forced by Stefan's departure because uh, we want to make sure we capture that appropriately. Um, so there's that. Uh, there's now a diff uh, when you generate the voter roll to compare against the last vote to see who is new to voting and who is not currently automatically cleared to vote due to activity, uh, which as a reminder is anyone who is committed to the CPython repo, uh, either committed or authored. So you can either be the one who clicked the green button to merge it or the one who created the PR uh, over the last two years. Uh, after that, there's a bunch of infrastructure now in various GitHub Action workflows. Uh, there's now a monthly cron job that will automatically run with a projection of a vote on December 1st based on today's data to let people check whenever they want, whether they are looking like they haven't committed uh, recently enough to look like they're going to make the vote. Uh, there's also now a manually triggered uh, action for those running the election so that they don't have to necessarily run the code locally and for anyone else who wants to run it at any time to see the results. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy over uh, my interpretation of PEP 13. Um, I'll leave that out. Uh, and then Marietta actually uh, has proposed a change to PEP 13 to clarify some things. Uh, I haven't checked my email this morning, uh, so I don't know if Marietta's shaking her head like she emailed about it. No, not yet. I okay. haven't. There'll be an email about a proposal Marietta is making to clarify some details about voting on PEP 13 probably in the next. We'll need to vote on PEP 13 change. Yeah, and we'll, uh, just as a reminder, any change to PEP 13 requires a vote. So I'm just, the FYI is more just, there'll be an email to ask for people to vote over probably the next week or so. Yeah, I will do it later today. Okay. Thank you. 
The next is will interpret of naming. I can take that one too. Um, so basically, the deal is, is uh, in the packaging project, uh, I made the call that we should probably use um, three underscore 10 to basically um, disambiguate what the heck 310 represents as the Python version. Um, and then there was some discussion whether or not we actually wanted that. Uh, so we discussed it uh, among ourselves, those who were in the meeting. We agree that actually the disambiguation was a good thing and long term is what we want. We were going to get it in uh, in the alphas, see how it goes, and if it falls flat on its face, because people have way too much code that assumes that first digit's only major versus people who made the mistake of the last digit being the minor, and that's thinking you're, they're running Python 31. Um, we'll see what the fallout is. If it's too bad, we'll roll back. Otherwise, we're currently assuming. Uh, three underscore 10 is going to be the version specifier for uh, tags and wheel file names primarily. And then other file cleanups where it's disambiguation with dots now and file names. Yeah, there, there's some additional work. There's a, I, I've got a nice big PR going <clears throat> to basically on the theory that if the CP310 is important enough to disambiguate, then all the other places we have 310 with no separator are probably worth disambiguating as well. Um, so that's having a lot more flow on effects, uh, primarily on windows. It is looking at touching the Python 310 zip file that goes on the default search path, um, for other platforms. And there's a few other things. So that's kind of big and open, uh, but not actually related to the wheel tag. So there is the possibility of just the wheel tag gets the underscore. Um, there is the possibility of all of our soon to be three digit version numbers become one digit separated followed by two digits. Uh, and I think there's still the possibility of no disambiguation at all. And anywhere where we currently have three nine, we'll just go to three one oh. Cool. Uh... Since the alpha is out, I think we already have a ticket for that, and they marked it as closed. So hopefully, the next update will have a fix for that. Closed as in fixed, I hope. Yeah, closed as in fixed. How is it possible? Um, how how is Apple planning to release a an operating system that presumably relies on Python without having made this before? Well, they actually have a very surprisingly, to me at least, I think to Ronald as well. All of a sudden, yeah. uh, a couple of months ago, we got this uh, patch landed from work into doing this. So. Um, you know, that's kind of, uh, I don't, I don't think that's ever happened before. It was, yeah, normally they're pleasant. just a part of it. That's good. Yeah. So it was a very pleasant surprise and, and Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Dana from Apple has, has been working, uh, very, so, uh, that's been very, very good, but, uh, uh, as some of you may know, in the past, back when last time Matt made the transition, you know, from PowerPC to uh, Intel, they came up with this uh, um, universal format business, which allows multiple uh, archi CPU architecture binaries to be uh, bundled into one file. Um, so. All of that infrastructure we supported, you know, 10 years ago, and that's still there. So that makes, uh, they're using that same mechanism uh, for adding Apple Silicon, uh, uh, aka ARM64 support here. So um, that makes that a lot easier. But there's also one other thing that, uh, what's called weak linking, which 
means we, once that's all tested and, and landed, we'll now be able to build like uh, installers on the latest version of Mac OS and they will be supported on uh, older versions as well. Meaning, and the, the big thing about that is that uh, people running the uh, binaries on newer systems will be able to take advantage of the latest features of that that version of Mac OS uh, as opposed to the way we've had to do it in the past. So, so the, both of those are really, really big things and probably the biggest changes in the uh, Mac side of things in many, many years. To, uh, be, and, and besides that, uh, Ronald particularly has gone through and fixed uh, a bunch of uh, other uh, uh, bugs out there. So thank you very much, Ronald. It's been a very productive week, I think. Um, Ned, yeah. and Ronald, to clarify, so we got a large contribution from Apple for Python 3. That's correct. Wow, okay, I missed out because I thought that Apple was going to kill Python from Mac OS. Well, they, they, they are not shipping Python 3 as part of Mac OS in general. However, they are shipping it as part of the Xcode tool packages. I think there's something like something in LLVM or something that actually uses Python actually they're shipping a Python 3.8, believe it or not, in the, in Xcode, the latest Xcode. I also say they flowed this all the way down up, uh, upstream or downstream, depending how you look at it, to the packaging projects. So it's on. We were uh, Ned and Ron will ask us to hold off on it, but like they're downstreaming all the way through the instance installation package ecosystem. So yeah, yeah, cool. And uh, just for things they ship. They want to support, uh, it was at uh, WWDC, they want to support well, more stuff that runs on their platform and are uh, ship, uh, helping patches uh, with patches to support the new ARM uh, hardware uh, for more projects than just what they use themselves, which is great. Yes, big change. Okay, was that the Mac OS project or? Yep. It, it okay, because I got kicked out from Zoom momentarily. <laughs> uh, okay, then the next is F strings. Uh, I can I can summarize. We sort of debated various ways of properly parsing F strings. Uh, it looks like the right approach is some kind of stack in the tokenizer that uh, sort of allows the tokenizer to push different modes on the, onto that stack. Uh, I think this was an idea first brought up by uh, Mark Shannon. Uh, Lissandros is going to uh, write up a detailed design and grammar uh, and discover various uh, edge cases. And there are a lot of edge cases. There's the format spec, there's the, uh, the magical equal sign, uh, and a few other uh, details to be taken care of. Uh, but we made uh, really good progress. That's great. Uh, the next is DSLs. Steve, do you want to go for that? Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like I hijacked the discussion a little bit when I came in and dove deeper into the, price. Price. The, the lightweight lambdas idea. Um, because I, I wasn't, like, I didn't initiate that group or that conversation at all. But when I, when I came in, it was kind of at a point of um, <clears throat> how do we take kind of prefixed strings like F strings and have generic prefixes that can be usable anywhere, which got into a discussion of, well, what the DSLs actually want here? Uh, and, you know, how are they going to get it from this, which led us to a point where the, the more valuable things 
that we're going to pursue uh, going forward. And, and I think we're at a point with the design where we're going to go and review it with a range of potential users of this, so the libraries, pandas and stuff, uh, is kind of deferred evaluation, uh, so essentially a lambda, um, but one that is also introspectable. So, you know, a lambda, you get a code object right now, where and all you can really do is call it. We're looking at something that includes not strictly the source code, but enough source code information that you can reproduce the AST if you want to do AST transforms, uh, includes parameter information so you know what it's already captured, you know what it can be called with, uh, and basically enough, and, and also a shorter syntax, <clears throat> which is one of the things that, you know, we're expecting to get feedback from. Uh, nice thing about the taxes for this now. Uh, but, but yeah, essentially we're going to put together kind of a lightweight and give automatically determined free variables so automatically captured locals and has passed them through and it's captured the the actual expression which messages and <laughs> on Discord over the week in one go. Um, I don't know what else happened. Anything? No, much. Okay. Uh, then the next is the hash lib SSL. Oh yes, I can talk about that. So um, I was able to close a couple of issues related to the SSL model. And we also discussed uh, to move forward and deprecate all versions of OpenSSL. And since it's going to be much harder for us uh, in the last couple of years, also uh, barely deprecate support for LibreSSL in a nice way. So the idea is that uh, since LibreSSL is diverging farther and farther away from OpenSSL APIs, uh, we can't sustain that anymore, that we can't support LibreSSL until they catch up and provide all the APIs that we require. Uh, that's one pep uh, that is like half ready. Another pep it's just sketched up is also to deprecate all the insecure OpenSSL TLS versions and require uh, only official support TLS 1.2 and 1.3 and not claim that we can do all the more insecure versions of TLS um, and not even test them. So people may opt in to use them if their local copy of OpenSSL supports that, but we're not going to do any kind of guarantees. And that pep is um, just very sketched up right now. I need to uh, finish, send them out for internal review next week via Google Docs, and then hopefully in two weeks, Bob list. Christian, I've got a quick question. Uh, does, do I understand that with uh, OpenSSL 3, which is the, I guess the next big version of OpenSSL, that allegedly resolves all the license issues that's you know, really caused the some of these other projects to come forth. Is that right? Yes, so OpenSSL 3 uh, will completely relicense. Um, they'll further clean up the APIs and move crypto code into providers. Um, we can compile with OpenSSL 3.0, but we get like deprecation warnings. So I will probably need to go another round and clean up the code. And that's also one of the reasons why I want to remove support for the old version of OpenSSL, because it's going to be much more complicated to support like three different variants of the API. Uh, including there is also four variants of the API in the same C code. That's uh, annoying. OK. Uh, thank you for the update. Um, let's go to the next project, the auto formatting project. All right, so the big idea here is uh, to use tooling to automatically format like our C, Python, REST code in the C Python repo, just to take like that step of following whatever style guides and conventions we have right now manually. Um, 
one of the reasons, one of the big reasons why is like, it's just another step for new contributors to learn. And with the already limited like core dev bandwidth, they can be like back and forth between like, oh, fix this, fix that. And that can easily like tack on hours to like days to existing pull requests. Um, in this space, we haven't like picked any particular tools or anything yet. Uh, we just kind of want to throw it out there and get a feel for what like people think of it. Um, we've enumerated like some of the problems in here, like what happens if we add like a new syntax feature to the language and the formatter doesn't support it. Uh, what do we do with like clinic or auto generated code and like existing patches? Get uh, our motivation out there and see what people think. Sounds great. Okay, the next is the Sprint Platform project. I guess I can take it. Um, some of us just sort of kick off a discussion in general that uh, I had us pull off to uh, the side about what would we want to do if slash when we do this again virtually. Um, because some people seem to be happy with Discord and some not. Basically, it seemed to come around to trade off and the great admins we've had on Discord, but the fact that it's kind of like a closed off corner of a much bigger thing versus something like Slack, where it would just be totally walled off garden where we can just totally openly run around like kids and just have fun and not have to worry about that. And have it simplified because you don't have to worry about um, scales. Um, that was basically it. It didn't really land anywhere. It said whoever organizes probably gets to choose the platform. Um, and where it left off with the very easy navigation uh, that's kind of uncluttered. So it's just easy to jump in and just get going. That's basically it. Thank you. It was a good way to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> Briefly, do you see them? Hello. It does have good threading, though. So, of us have used it besides you, know, you and Steve. <laughs> Bar Bar oh, Barry, Barry has, awesome. and he'll tell you how much he hates it on Mac. Yeah, there, yeah, it's got problems on Mac, but it's usable. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the integrated calendar and and kind of saved files is nice as well. That I haven't seen anything else with that. Well, Slack's yeah, Google has that forever. Like all the big ones will do that. We don't necessarily need all of these things. So anyway, see, whoever organizes probably gets to make the call what tool to use. But I don't think anyone came out of this saying, "Oh my God, Discord is amazing. We should stick with it." I think people are open to continue to try new platforms. Yeah, so long as it works in a browser. All right. Uh, the last project is the language summit planning. Uh, basically, what we discuss is how we're going to do the next language summit. Basically, Lucas and I are looking for people who will help or shadow us for the next language summit. And that will allow us to step down in the future um, because we, we realize it's good to rotate this, um, get new perspective from people instead of the same people doing it again and again. Um, we will be sending. Hello. <laughs> Is this working? <laughs> I, I keep getting kicked out of Zoom. What's the I She doesn't case? know it's not working if she's not on, right? <laughs> Is that how that works? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, it still says it's continuing to record, so I don't know. What's the last thing I said? <laughs> you and you and Wukash, and that was about it. Right. Yeah. Something okay. about language uh, summit. Yeah. 
we'll look, we're looking for people to help us organize the next summit. Um, basically, we, we think it's a good it's good to rotate this responsibility to new folks. Um, with hope that eventually we will be able to step down from the summit. Um, we will be sending out an email to Python committees. Um, basically asking whoever wants to raise their hand and help us. We also discussed things that was working or didn't work in the past summit as a feedback to the, for us as organizers and for future organizers to think about. That is all. Uh, okay. I think that covers all the projects. Okay, just in case I didn't miss anybody, uh, does anybody know if I somehow missed your project? Okay. Uh, okay, so we, you all really did a lot of work this week alone. I'm not seeing anything. But... Oh, there we go. You see my screen? <laughs> just an emoji. I see an emoji. Yeah. Sure, we see, we see okay. the <laughs> Basically, I just want to say thank you, all of you, for spending this week with us, with other core developers, um, taking the time off from work and from life. Um, we really accomplished a lot. So thank you for being here. And thank you so much, Google, for sponsoring this event and funding and supporting Python, supporting the Piazza and sending with the sponsorship, we're able to send meal stipends to anyone who participate in the sprint. Thank you so much, Python Software Foundation, um, for supporting us and helping us organize this sprint. Especially thank you, Ernest, um, for hosting, for moderating our AMA session. And thank you, the accounting team, for for helping us and sending out the meal stipends. Um, I, I received it on Wednesday, so really appreciate it. Thank you, Python Discord team, who hosted us on Discord on their server and their admins have been super hands-on. So thanks, Ewin, not sure I pronounced this. Thanks, Leon, Joe, Bradley, Sebastian, Dennis, and Daniel. Thank you to my co-organizers personally. I'm really grateful for both Eva and Kyle for stepping up and helping to organize this print. When I signed up, I was clear in saying, I don't wanna be the only one doing this. So I'm really grateful for both of you for helping me from the beginning. So thank you, Eva and Kyle. Yep, and just wanted to, uh, this sprint that would not have been possible without all of uh, this incredible work on the agenda and prior experience events. You know, we definitely could have done it. Thank you, Mariotta. Thank you. Um, just one last thing I have. We have created this form to collect feedback from this, uh, from this print. Um, basically, we like to hear anything you have about this virtual sprint and think of it in the context of if we were to do another virtual sprint um, instead of in person we know we know that the in person is very different you can share any input about this please go to the forum and share with us I will be sending um, this link in discord and I might I might send an email. I don't know. I, I don't like emails. <laughs> um, but no, we can't click on Zoom. Okay, I will share these slides and I will post this link on Discord. That's all I got. So thank you all again. Um, yeah. Thank you, Marietta. Thank you. Again, thank you, Marietta and Kyle. Yeah. And thanks Agreed. to all of you. Thanks to everyone who attended. Thanks to the new people. 
many new faces actually even for me uh, yeah my, my personal thought is I went into it kind of skeptical about the whole online thing and I came out believing that it can actually work but I still miss the in-person meeting yeah. to be sure Absolutely. Yeah. This, this, was, this was definitely the best online uh, event I've attended Oh, thank wow, you. Wow, thank you. That means a lot. Actually, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> means a lot to us. Yeah. yeah. Super organized. Super fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You guys did a great job. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stop recording.